Creations have a history of rebelling against their creators. Think Hal or Frankenstein's monster, Ultron, or Velociraptors. So what if Rick Sanchez is no different? What if the end game of Rick and Morty is that one day, Rick's gonna pull a rocket and break free? This guy's taking Roy off the grid! <sighs> this is Screen Crush. What's up everyone, I'm Ryan Airy. Now there's a fan theory that Rick knows he's on a sitcom, and this makes perfect sense. Rick is the smartest man in the universe, and of all the universes, our Rick is the Rickest Rick of them all. So it would make sense that he would have special insight into who he really is. The infinite Rick, a god. So what if Rick is so smart that he's actually figured out he's on a TV show? Oh, we'll be right back. That's why he's always spouting self-aware catchphrases. Well, beloved dub dub, Ricky Ticky Tabby, bitch! And that's the way the news goes. AIDS! <laughs> yeah! Say that all the time! It's almost like he's pitching these catchphrases to some greater power that only he can perceive. And part of this pitch is his character arc. Rick ends the first episode by telling the audience, Rick and Morty forever and forever 100 years, Rick and Morty some things. Now Rick knows his fate is tied to the arc that the writers create for him, but he still throws out different storylines that he can retain some control over what happens to him. Nuggets. I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty! That's my series arc, Morty! Hell? If it takes nine seasons! Rick wants to assure us, the viewers, that his story is gonna be worth watching. From now on, Rick and Morty doing a little of this and a little of that. In a roundabout way, he does this in Vindicators 3, The Return of World Ender. The villain World Ender is bigger and badder than any other character you've seen in the Rick and Morty's diverse thus far. Until he wasn't. <laughs> so drunk Rick kills him like so much forgettable Malekith. But let's be honest. Most movie supervillains are dull, so Rick becomes a new supervillain because it'll be more fun and entertaining for the audience. Look, I'm a, l a little more complex than you guys, and no offense, but I've always suspected that a lot of what you do in a year could be knocked out in a couple of hours. Rick wants to entertain us because if we stop watching, the show will be canceled and he'll cease to exist. Oh no. And this is what happens to several planets in Get Swifty, where whole worlds entertain all powerful beings to avoid destruction. The Cromulon feed on the talent and showmanship of less evolved life forms. This is actually a metaphor for real TV. If we, the audience, don't like a show, it becomes... Disqualified! <laughs> We even get a guest star to bump up ratings in the form of Ice-T, played by Dan Harmon. Not to mention all the other celebrities that have appeared. Look at me, I'm Mr. So-and-so dick. Don't ask why I can talk. Mm-mm-mm. This is one in a long line of episodes where smaller life forms exist to entertain or serve greater beings. Assess this with cold indifference. In the Ricks Must Be Crazy, Rick creates a whole microverse whose purpose is to power up his car battery. I then introduce that life to the wonders of electricity, which they now generate on a global scale. And you know, some of it goes to power my engine and charge my phone and stuff. From scientist Zeep Zamflort to Kyle, everyone has a different reaction to realizing their fate is controlled by someone else. Kyle gives up. Life is meaningless now that he knows his fate was always in the hands of someone else while Zeep Zanflorp tries to fight his creator and escape his fate, though he eventually fails. Now they're both a mixture of Rick. One's a nihilist and knows nothing matters, and the other won't go gentle into that good night. Zeep and Kyle are both people who are trapped inside a box to make life easier for their creators. Does that sound familiar? What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. All of Rick's creations become self-aware, only to realize that nothing matters because their lives are controlled just like Rick's. Now maybe this is hereditary because one of Rick's creators, Dan Harmon, has even said that life is meaningless, so when does it ever end or begin? Rick is a nihilist because he knows nothing matters. His life is controlled by his creators. The universe is basically an animal. It grazes on the ordinary creates infinite idiots just to eat them. This self-awareness also explains why Rick is so good at the virtual reality game, Roy, A Life Well Lived. This guy doesn't have a social security number for Roy! Morty gets so invested that he forgets he's in a game, and when it's over, he's still confused about who he is. <gasps> what the hell? Whoa, whoa, where am I? Rick, on the other hand, understands that there are no consequences in the game or in any pretend life, as long as he keeps things interesting for the audience. Yeah, that's the difference between you and me, Morty. I never go back to the carpet store. He even knew his suicide attempt would fail at the end of the Unity episode because the show needs to keep him alive. It's even more depressing that the showrunners won't just let him die. <laughs> 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 
But unlike Zeep and his other angry creations, Rick was written to be so smart that he's actually smarter than his creators. Rick constantly shows disdain for his creators. He calls out the lame writing on the show. Jeez, you working on your tight five for the comedy store, Morty? Rick even at times says stuff that he realizes he didn't even mean to say. Whatever you say, Tony Cold Steve Austin. I don't know why I just said that. Rick was created by Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland. But if he's smarter than his creators, that creates a God paradox. That's where God creates a rock so big that even he can't move it. Now this reminds me of the Star Trek The Next Generation episode where Data creates a hologram of Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes. But because Data wants an adversary worthy of his android brain, he makes Moriarty so intelligent that he becomes self-aware and threatens to take over the Enterprise. I want my existence. I want it out there just as you have yours. Roiland and Harmon, like Data, were so busy with the idea of creating an intelligent being that they never stopped to ask if they should. I am alive. And just like Moriarty, Rick could find a way out. In M. Night Shyamalan's, Rick is stuck in a Zygerian simulation. <laughs> Old discolored butt flaps tries tricking Rick into giving him the recipe for concentrated dark matter. All the while, Rick plays along, waiting for his chance to strike. And the final ingredient? Now this experience taught Rick how to use a long game approach, how to wait for the right moment to attack his creator and free himself from this prison. In Rick Shake Redemption, Rick uses the brain Brainalyzer to switch bodies with his captors. So maybe Rick could try to switch into Justin Roiland or even Dan Harmon. You, Frank, were the plaything of a demented, schlubby Jewish actor named... Justin Roiland! Harmon even said during an AV Club interview that a Redditor guessed the show's secret halfway through season one. And this theory was first posted on Reddit around that time. Every idea that, that, uh, that you ever wrote down with Dan, it's all real. I, I, I put it in there. I put it in there. Having Rick suddenly go into a live action environment is the kind of genre switching that Dan Harmon loved to do in Community. And that show is full of meta references. This is wrinkling my brain. This is wrinkling my brain. This is the movie. Love it. Abed, what did I tell you? You can't just mumble nonsense. No one's cutting away. What? N no, I don't want to see your pog collection. Every time they write a script, they give Rick new experiences, making him smarter. From fighting rats and shady governments as Pickle Rick to fighting his inner selves and Tiny Rick and Toxic Rick, he keeps learning how to escape inescapable situations. It's a trap! Abort! We never left it! <laughs> <laughs> Even the holographic simulation of Rick finds a way to break free. I can feel! I have mass! I'm a god now! So is this the season that Rick is going to break free into our dimension? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. <sighs> Buena, da, 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 da. Buena, da, da.